This video is a quick practical guide on how to protect yourself and members of your family from outside infections. Whether that be caused by bacteria in the environment or viral infections in the environment. So let's look at these practical things we can do, protecting yourself and your family. Now, if there's a disease around in the environment and a lot of people are suffering from it, there's a high prevalence of a condition, then the best thing you can do to protect yourself from it is avoid cross infection. And you get cross infection from other people. So stay at home where possible. Now I know you have to go out to work, but if possible, stay at home. Discourage visitors. So stay at home where possible, avoid crowded places. Aeroplanes are classic. We've seen on the news recently that cruise ships can be a problem. Buses, trains, queues, bu bu busy areas. We want to avoid cross infection. We want to avoid close contact. And two metres, <clears throat> two metres is close. So we need a two metre gap between us and other people because this prevents the droplet infections. Because the viruses and bacteria can be breathed out in the droplets of air that we exhale. Droplet infection. Most respiratory viruses will be transmitted like this. So a lot of diseases as well have incubation periods. So your uh, friend might ring you up and say, I'll just come around for a cup of tea. I'm feeling absolutely fine. Don't worry about the virus. But they could be incubating it. It's possible. If they've been in a crowded shop the day before or a couple of days before, they could be incubating the virus, but not yet have symptoms. They could be asymptomatic. So we need to be a bit asocial. We kind of need to change the way that we do things just for a period of time if there's a viral infection about. Obviously, avoid close contact with symptomatic people, people that are having symptoms, or the people that are potential carriers. Because with viral disease, <clears throat> there's often an incubation period. The people feel fine, but they're not. So don't share cups. Now, social behaviour. Maybe for a while we need to stop shaking hands. Because you can breathe the virus out onto your hands where you can breathe the virus out onto a surface in the droplets in your air. You touch the surface with your hand, and then you shake hands and the disease can be spread. And the disease is spread not through the skin on your hands, but when the virus gets to your mucous membranes <clears throat> in your mouth, because you're always doing this kind of thing, touching your face. So um, social habits need to change. Certainly, uh, like, Proper kissing would, would, would spread the disease, <clears throat> but even social kissing we should discourage. Hugs. We need to change our habits for a little while. Um, close contact is how this virus is spread. <clears throat> Obviously, don't kiss babies. And outside surfaces need to be considered to be contaminated in an epidemic if there's a lot of virus around. So people breathe it out. You touch it, even on money or outside surfaces. Your surface to your hands into you. This is why meticulous hand hygiene is important. Now I'm going to do a next video on washing your hands. I know it sounds simple and it, and it is, but there's a few things to do properly. <clears throat> so wash your, wash your hands, meticulous hand hygiene. And don't touch your eyes and your mouth with your hands, which we do all the time. Now people often ask me about masks. They do have some efficacy, but not a lot. <clears throat> so really the main purpose in wearing a mask is it stops you touching your face. It reminds you not to touch your face. But then the virus can trap on the mask, so you don't want to touch it. You've got to be careful how you take it off, not to cause uh, more contamination. So don't touch your eyes and your mouth and your nose like I'm always doing. Wash your hands, warm water, soap and water. Hand sanitizers with alcohol above 70% will kill viruses. But it needs a bit of contact time. So the best way is just to physically wash the viruses or the bacteria off. The soap will loosen the, the grease, the sebum on the top of your hands. The bacteria will be sticking on that, then the, the water will simply wash them away. The flowing effect is really what we need. When you sneeze <coughs> or cough, catch it, bin it, kill it. So I've sneezed into there now. So I'm going to close that like that. So the bugs that I've sneezed out are on the inside. And then I'm going to bin it. And then I'm going to wash my hands. Catch it, bin it, kill it. Coughs and sneezes spread diseases. This is the principle of droplet infection. Now, some viruses are spread in the feces. 
So meticulous hand hygiene after going to the toilet is important. And also the idea here is that if someone uses a public toilet and then they flush it, the virus could like aerosol out into the air. We don't know for some viruses whether this happens or not, but it does with others. So it's always worth considering. So because you might be carrying the virus, if you do use a public toilet, put the lid down, then flush it. And if you use a public toilet yourself, <clears throat> then make sure you're meticulous with hand hygiene, thorough hand hygiene after washing. And when you've washed your hands, ideally with a tissue, and if you haven't got tissues in the toilet, start carrying some, right? Start carrying some tissues. Then when you've washed your hands like that, then you can open the toilet door with, you can open the toilet door with the tissue. So that's, I know that's a cup, but <laughs> open the toilet door. And then again, crumple that up and, and catch it, bin it, kill it. And when you're knocking the tap off, knock it off with your elbow. But more of that on the next video. So meticulous hand hygiene, surface hygiene. Surfaces in the home um, can be cleaned with normal uh, home, home antiseptics, disinfectants. Just follow the manufacturer's recommendations on the bottle and that should be fine. You can sanitise your surfaces in your home. And when you come home or if you've been outside, always wash your hands thoroughly before you come in. Now, wearing a quality mask can give some benefit, but these surgical masks are designed to keep the bugs in, to stop me contaminating my patients, rather than to stop the uh, bugs coming from outside into me. So <clears throat> the N95s, these are masks that you buy uh, commercially for, for like working in smoky areas and dusty areas. So, so that, that they will give you some protection, but only for a limited period of time because they get wet and then the virus sticks onto the moisture. So again, when you take it off, if you touch the front of the mask, you're going to contaminate your hands. So you need to take it off from the side and then wrap it up and bin it. Uh, wrap around glasses. Now, the idea here is that some viruses can be spread via the eyes because the eyes are a mucous membrane. So mucous membranes are in your uh, mouth, your nose, uh, in your eyes. So if there's a lot of virus around or people are coughing on you, like we might do in a clinical environment, we might wear protective glasses. Maybe not so much for home protection, but it's worth thinking about. <clears throat> when I went ring my hospital up to visit, then it always says, if you've got a bug, don't come. <laughs> and hospitals tend to be buggy places anyway, so avoid hospitals limited visiting. Visit people if you need to, of course. <laughs> you have to visit the sick. But um, limit it and uh, think carefully. Could I be infected? Am I taking this infection into the hospital? Am I going to pick an infection up from the hospital? Now, boost your immune system as much as you can. Good nutrition, fruit, vegetables, coloured vegetables, enough protein or enough central fatty acids. <clears throat> All these things are going to help boost the immune system. They won't make the immune system better than normal. But if you're deficient in any nutrients, that can make the immune system worse than normal. So think about your nutrition. And if you live in the north like me or anywhere where there's not much sun, think about some vitamin D. So I take the, uh, the nice guideline dose of vitamin D every day, 25 micrograms, in winter because um, we just don't make it from the sunshine and vitamin D in food is not very much. So think about your vitamin D state status. Um, keep warm, <clears throat> sleep, family life. So keeping warm is good. When you're cold, your nose gets cold, <laughs> you're in cold air, and that reduces the blood supply to your nose. And if you reduce the blood supply to your nose, that reduces the number of protective white blood cells going to your nose and makes you more prone to getting infections in. That's one reason when you get cold, you can get a cold um, because of the blood supply to your nose. So try and keep warm if you can. Get plenty of sleep. That's good for immunity. Family life is uh, interesting. So if a member of the family does have it, put them in a room on their own. And that family member ideally would wear a mask when people are going into them to protect others <coughs> from themselves. Um, also in family life, they're thinking about sex and this disease may be sexually transmitted. So if one per partner was incubating the disease, it may be possible that they give it to a sexual partner. We, 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 we don't know about the new viral diseases. It may be the case, it may not be. Um, thoroughly cooking meat and eggs. If there's virus in the animals, <clears throat> as we haven't got in the UK, but if there were to be virus in the animals, then cooking the meat and the eggs would be important because, for example, people can get, can get MERS from eating a poorly cooked camel meat, but that's not a big problem. But what is a problem is contamination of food after it's been cooked. 
So um, someone makes a perfectly boiled, hygienic meal, then they cough on it or sneeze on it, or they contaminate it with their hands from a dirty surface onto the food. Um, if they're passing you a sandwich or something. So, so contamination of uncooked food and um, contamination of cooked food is a possibility, but it's more likely to happen from people contaminating the food after it's been cooked. And avoiding public spaces, as we talked about, wear a mask at home if you start to feel unwell with fever. So th they are basic rules for protecting yourself against environmental bacteria and environmental viruses. It's obviously particularly important at the current time. It may become more important soon. Uh, I've kept this all quite simple. It's just This is just for the interested member of the public who want to protect themselves and their family. So do feel free to share this on Facebook. This is the sort of basic knowledge in an old-fashioned lesson that really everyone should know. Most people do, but it's always worth reinforcing it uh, in the current climate.